you guys missed last week's episode, we went ahead and mapped out where we wanted our battery to sit underneath inside the framing there. So we cut everything out of acrylic. You can see the floor piece on the bottom here. And I also made a front piece to go. It's basically a shield. And this is how it came out when we cut it out of metal. I did outsource that because I can't cut metal in house. But uh, by cutting acrylic, it allows me to make sure everything's going to fit before I actually spend the money to cut it out of metal. Took it over to my buddy Drew at Redbeard Welding, and he welded everything in place. It makes it way easier when things are on the bike and tightened down so things don't flex in ways you don't want it to. And those welds are just beautiful. My welds, not that great <laughs> at all. So having him locally is super helpful and makes everything run super smoothly. So thankful. If you go back to previous videos, you'll remember that I did initially make this front shield out of cardboard it was really hard to template with the different angles initially so when I did get it all cut out of metal I cut it by hand to score the fronts basically to bend the wings back and then welded those to make them stronger so you can see a little bit better on this angle where I bent those in with a hammer and just a, <laughs> an angle grinder and it came out awesome so this just kind of sits up front and shields the battery back onto the motor I went ahead and shaved off this bottom tab normally there's a through bolt that you would connect this to some sort of mounting bracket but in our case I need that shaved off because this hole on our bottom plate goes through the bottom hole on our frame so it just gives us another mounting point point. and here's just a quick overview of the parts that we have before we send them off for powder so excited I had the idea that I wanted to run one of my old Grom levers on here basically as another regen lever so I can run regen aside from the brake force itself. So I went ahead and cut that down to make it fit. But what I didn't realize is, and I should have known this, there's a plunger on the inside of here with a spring, as you can see here. And without that plunger and spring, whenever you compress this, it won't push back. So I kind of went back to the drawing board for that and just to see what I wanted to do exactly on regen. But that aside, went ahead and got the parts powdered, so that's cool. <laughs> kind of in the other good news department. It was at this point when I realized, man, I really should have powder coated the frame because this looks beautiful. I'm so happy with how it came out and it just looks flawless and the frame does not. Uh, and then going back here to the rear sprocket, I went ahead and spaced that out about a quarter inch so it was in line with the sprocket up front. I also had to run longer wheel studs for that. And then you can see here my mounting points. I have three up front, one in the back, two on the bottom, and then one underneath the motor. So that motor is not going anywhere. It's a big thing on these motors that they actually shear motor mounting points. So I wanted to make sure that that's not even a thing. And then looking up top here, Everything looks just nice and neat. Factory, it'll be hidden for the most part. I did put my speedometer under the seat because I don't need my speedometer. I only wanted it for the battery gauge itself. Then I plopped the battery in and man, I can finally see the vision for how it was supposed to look from when I stenciled it down on a piece of paper to ending up now and then peeling off this blue plastic. Honestly, I think everyone can agree with me when I say peeling off of plastic off of new things is by far my favorite part of getting anything new. Something so satisfying about that. You can see the front shield here came out awesome. I also ran a horn, new suspension on the front and rear. I'm just so excited to get this thing out and finally rip on it. Went ahead and used all thread to hold that battery down, keep it in place, put the chain on there. So everything's just kind of coming along as I would want. We're gonna get this thing out sooner than later, start ripping on it because that's what it's made for. And we'll key it on just to show you guys a couple small power blips here. It's awesome. Unfortunately, did have to remove the bars as much as I wanted to keep them and the factory red plastic. My bars were bent and I didn't realize it until after the fact. So I went ahead and got these pro tapers and popped them on. It raised the bars up about two inches, fantastic. And then my lines go into a single brake lever now, which I really love because it controls both front and rear brakes at once. And I can also run regen off of that brake. So it all around makes it a lot better. It is a little tight when I turn right here but it doesn't lock up, so I don't think it'll be a problem, especially with the amount of power that I have to be able to push through any sort of lockup should I have it. Considering I never actually fit the battery onto the bike before fitting the plastics back on, I only had to trim maybe a quarter inch off of each of the inner fenders on each side, so I was really happy with how that came out. It only took about five minutes to fix. After getting the front plastics put on, I circled back to Drew's a couple days later because I forgot a crucial component that I wanted to do on this build. You can see Drew's grinding the tabs off right now on the rear swing arm because I'm putting a gusset in there and the reason being is because these break 
They're notorious because I'm an adult riding a kid's quad, right? So you can see on the right side here, it broke off. I found this in a Facebook group or a forum that I'm in. And then this is seen on many different swing arms throughout all the TRX 90s different years. And this is an example of the gusset somebody sells for a business. So I went ahead and made my own, put it in there, drew welded it up and it came out really nice. So once it was welded in there, I just painted it black with a spray can. I wasn't trying to powder this or take everything back apart because at the end of the day, it's just gonna get destroyed anyways. So this may or may not hold up longer. Time will tell, we'll see. Eventually I might upgrade the swing arm anyways. So circling back, I wanted to just show an appreciation for where I started with this build. It really wasn't much. And again, it's a kid's quad, so underpowered, really small. And I wanted to make it something that I could enjoy as a full-size adult. Later that night, I promised my wife that she could have the first ride on it. So this is her just kind of putzing around the yard. <laughs> she got the throttle. Uh, right there, you can see it in the corner. Uh, it almost threw her to the fence. It's really fun. You don't wake up the neighbors. And voila, we have a beautiful assembled OEM plus looking bike. Obviously the plastics are a little beat up. It's 20, 25 years old now. So this thing is a historical mini electric e-quad, but I'm so happy with how it came out. You can see the light underneath there, the suspension shining through. And I do have two different color wheel wells on each side. It's fine, don't worry about it. It's just part of the process having such an older bike, but everything just buttoned up beautifully. If you didn't know what you were looking at, you would think that this came like this. And that's the goal with any of our builds, Pro Taper Pars up here. I even kept the gas cap. Hey, little buddy. <laughs> Quad lock up top there too. Uh, I just need to throw grips on it. That's the only lasting thing. And then going back down to the bottom, my buddy Waji, shout out Waji, made this awesome cover for the sprocket to the right there that you can see. So it catches all the grease and mud and whatever else, keeps it off the sprocket and keeps everything nice and clean in there and overall just really happy with how everything came out i think everything's well protected i went ahead and waterproofed a lot of the connectors electrical taped as much as i could but we'll see i've never had a battery powered thing off-road so <laughs> it really just comes down to where is water getting into because as you know water gets into everything but otherwise we're going to get out and rip this on the next video i hope you guys stick around for it if you have any questions let me know we'll see you on the next one goodbye